The holiday season is upon us for 2019, and every single year, I'm willing to bet there are more people in your life that are looking for tabletop games, asking for them as gifts. Maybe they don't know what they want. Maybe you're someone who wants to get into board games, but you're not sure what you should be asking for. This list is for you. We've put together a whole bunch of games and products that we personally enjoy for one reason or another that we think would make excellent gifts this year. That's right. We, if we focus on games throughout the entire collection of board games, this video would probably go into 2020. So we're gonna focus just on games that came out in 2019 and what we enjoyed about them. Of course, like previous years, we're gonna break them up into three different categories. Casual, which is your lighter games, or more party-like games, or don't last very long per session. Medium games, which are a bit more difficult, but not too long, maybe an hour or a little over that for playtime. Then finally, your advanced games. These are gonna have a lot more rules and probably take a few hours per game session. But without further ado, let's dive into the casual games. Funko Pop figures are everywhere. They're into every genre, every game, every TV show, and now into board games. Funkoverse Strategy Game is a new board game series from the Funkoverse line in which you can pick up different sets based on different uh, properties such as Harry Potter, Batman, Rick and Morty, my personal favorite, Golden Girls. And you can play, they come with a bunch of different game modes in there. You can do team battles, tag team, king of the hill. This is a great one for obviously anyone who's already into Funko figures. Also maybe those properties because not only will you, let's say you have someone who's a fan of Harry Potter. You can buy them the Harry Potter set and if they're into another uh, property that may come out later on. Like I would not be shocked if we get some more Disney properties from them. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good one for that reason. You have lots of different sets you can mix and match and decide which ones fit the person you're getting it for the best. Uh, and maybe a present to get them in years to come if they like that one. <laughs> yes. Next up for the casual games list, we have Horrified. This is a game all about those classic universal movie monsters. It's a cooperative game, so everyone is working together and you're trying to stop Dracula, the Invisible Man, the mummy, the creature from the Black Lagoon, that kind of thing. And each one has their own special individual rules that changes up how you need to strategize against them. But it's one that is super easy to play. Uh, it has been buzzed about by almost everybody I've heard who has played it. And it is one of these games that will appeal to a lot of people, even though I know Halloween's over, Christmas and Hanukkah are not usually the spooky <laughs> holidays. Hey, uh, hey, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> that's true. Uh, maybe you've also got like uh, someone, you know, you've got a parent who is, was a big fan of the original Yeah, movies. that's what I was thinking of. Seems like it also did better than their uh, Dark Universe. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, they tried to do that in movie form. If you're disappointed by the Tom Cruise <laughs> mummy, <laughs> pick up this board game. <laughs> well, sticking with movies into board games, we have Jaws. One player will play as the very famous shark, while the other is the humans. And it's actually separated into two sections, the land phase and then the orca phase when you're on the boat. So this is maybe a bit more advanced, uh, always with these 1v all because you are actually playing different styles. But it's based on a very popular movie, I think a great game if anyone's a fan of that movie, or maybe if someone's not afraid, uh, someone is very afraid of sharks, I mean, uh, so they can be on the human side or maybe face their fears and play as the Jaws. <laughs> no, that's a, yeah, you could have a little therapy session with, <laughs> with a Jaws board game. Yeah, I mean, if you like Jaws, and who doesn't? Mm -hmm. Definitely a nice casual one you can pick up for people. Um, next up is the winner of the most prestigious award in board games. That's the Spiel de Jahres, a German award. And this game is called Just One. It's a very simple, very lighthearted word word guessing game. One player has to guess a word and everyone else can only write down a one word clue. But the twist is if any of the other players write the same clue, then those two clues cancel out and the guesser doesn't get to see either of them. So it's a challenge of trying to write distinct words that still will allow the guesser to figure out what the word is. Uh, really, really fun addictive game that is so simple. Literally, what I just said is the rules. So you could set this one up in 10 seconds and mm -hmm. get playing. No, we love this game. Anytime where these where you have to put in your own input, I like a lot more because you can be a bit more clever. Keeping on with the party, we have Detective Club from Blue Orange. Now, the way this game works is you will have your group of uh, players and you'll hand out notebooks. One person is sort of the judge and will look at his hand of cards, which are all pictures, and try to come up with something that matches maybe two of them, maybe water, because two of them have like fish or water on them. He'll write water on all but one notebook. He'll hand them out, and one person then has that blank notebook and has to sort of guess 
what that word is by how every turn everyone's gonna play a card. So it's all about trying to read other people's cards, trying to sort of uh, fake your way through and try to convince people, because at the end you're gonna vote who is the one who did not get the word. And it becomes this really fun game of everyone trying to explain why their cards work, why they don't. And then everyone's like, oh, you didn't put good cards. Well, I just had bad cards in hand. <laughs> and it can yeah. just have, it's simple and light, but really fun with that. And we've had some other games like Spyfall that do something similar. But I think you and I find this one works a lot better than the rest. It's certainly more friendly towards casual players. It doesn't feel as aggressive. You don't feel bad necessarily mm -hmm. if you're bad at lying or something like that. Um, and if you've played anything like Dixit, the artwork is really gorgeous to look at. It's that same sort of style of a game that we've seen before. Uh, really fun one, definitely. An easy, another easy one for people to pick up on. Tiny Towns is our next one. This is published by AEG. This is a city building game in a sense. Every player has their own individual board and you are putting down different types of buildings they are able to build using resource cubes. But you have to first place those resource cubes in very specific patterns depending on which building cards are available. Now there are a couple different game modes but often you're gonna have the same choices that other players have. So if the resource for the round is wood, everyone's gonna be putting a wood cube on their board but you could put it somewhere different. So by the end of the game, even though you all had mostly the the same things to work with, you end up with a very different setup and you're scored based on which building types you got and how many you had. A uh, little, little step up maybe in for rules from some of the other ones in our casual section, but still pretty easy to pick up, pretty light game. Another big thing, it can fit any number of players. <laughs> That's true. You really just need to make sure you have enough boards and stuff, but really it can work really well there. So if you ha have maybe a very big family get together or something, this would be a, a, a good pickup. Or if you wanna to give to someone who's in college, so that way they can fit with a large group, once again, great buy. Now let's get a little bit psychic with Medium from Greater Than Games. This is sort of a word guessing game, but the way it works is you're gonna work with the people next to you per each round. So first you'll work with the person on your right, then the left, and you're trying to connect a word. So if one person plays kitchen, the other plays hero, someone may say sandwich, trying to get think food across, and you're hoping the other player thinks as well. Of course, if you fail, you actually will play more cards to try to connect that. It's this really fun game of just trying to think along the same brain, oh, brain waves, so to speak. Now this one is really innovative, really creative. I think uh, similar to Just One, it's if you like any kind of word guessing game and trying to read what other players are thinking of and match them, uh, in Just One you're trying not to match them. <laughs> in this case, you're trying to, to match them. Uh, it's it's a really creative, fun one. And another one that just you can just play it and go. You go. You can play it with a large number of players. I think you need at least three, but uh, it, it can fit different numbers pretty easily. Uh, and then our last casual game recommendation is the Adventure Games series from Cosmos. If you have a group that likes any kind of an escape room style game, or if they like some classic point and click adventure games from the 90s, then this might be one that they want to check out. These ones are a little different from escape rooms, but you're going through this storyline, finding different rooms and trying to solve puzzles, trying to connect items and locations in different creative ways, fully cooperative. It also comes with an app which reads out the story to you if you'd like, so that's kind of cool. You can have a little uh, cinematic experience mm -hmm. almost. And these are nice because each one is only like 15 bucks and they make a good stocking stuffer, I think, because they're really small and you can just play it in one or two sessions, two or three sessions actually, depending on, it depends on how long you want to go, but they're quick. We're now entering the medium section and we're gonna start with a real hot one that's just hit the press, Marvel Champions. This is the new LCG from Fantasy Flight Games. If you don't know what an LCG is, these are pretty much card games similar to Magic the Gathering, but instead of random packs, everything will come in fully known packs with a full set of cards, so you never have to buy multiples unless you really want to buy multiple decks. The core set will come with a lot of fan favorites including Spider-Man, Iron Man, She-Hulk, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel. So great set of heroes there as well as a few villains. And not only that, once you buy this and give it to whoever is a big Marvel fan and judging by the movies is a lot of America, uh, you will not also be able to expand. Captain America and Miss Marvel are coming soon as sets as well as the Green Goblin as a villain. So this is a game that's gonna keep on giving. Sort of like uh, we mentioned earlier, you can just buy this and you know you've got gifts for life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you got a Marvel fan uh, and you know they are 
are familiar with these kinds of games. It's cooperative also, which is really nice. Uh, absolutely one to look at. Probably one of the hottest, if not the hottest release of this year. Well, that's arguable, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, here's one if you have someone who is a fan of Game of Thrones. Just went off the air, maybe they were disappointed by the ending. <laughs> maybe you could lift their spirits up with this game. It's Game of Thrones Oathbreaker. Now this one is a social deduction hidden role game. So if they're familiar with anything like Werewolf or The Resistance or Mafia, it's sort of in that vein where different players are trying to sabotage the group as a whole. One player will be the king and they are trying to get, everyone wants to pretend that they're helping the king, but a couple people aren't on their side. You'll be carrying on different missions and putting in cards. And if you are a bad guy, you're secretly putting in cards that are not good for the mission. And once they're revealed, you're trying to deduce who you think was in the wrong. So it's a tried and true formula, but if you like the Game of Thrones theme, this uses images from the TV show directly. Yes, this is the HBO version. So definitely for fans of that show, uh, I think they're gonna find some cool stuff in there and not super in-depth like some of the other Game of Thrones games are. It's definitely on the ca more casual side. Well, Medium it focuses a lot more on the social aspect, so you're not gonna get punished, for example, like me who doesn't really know as much about the Game of Thrones. Not a trivia game, <laughs> yeah, by any means. But it definitely captures the aspect of playing a game and deciding when the backstab or not, even if you're the good side, like just trying to trick some of the bad guys if you're on the side or something. You yeah, know? yeah, there's definitely some games there to play. Now, this wouldn't be a board game list without something relating to Lovecraft. Now, Fantasy Flight has a huge series of Arkham Horror games. Each one's very different, and they released a new one in the set titled Arkham Horror Final Hour. In this game, the end is nigh. The cultists are almost done with their ritual, and you're going to have to run around Miskatonic University trying to stop them. This is a light game mostly compared to the rest, where you're going to just move around your little character to different zones, fight monsters, and try to find clues. But what's interesting about this is you're gonna play two cards on your turn with numbers on them. And depending on how, what numbers other people play on top of those cards, you'll either get the top effect, which is usually good, versus the bottom effect, which is usually bad. It's really interesting because you're not actually allowed to talk during that time, so you have to sort of guess like, oh, if he played a two or a three, he really wants that top effect. Or if he played a 15 or 16, he probably doesn't care which way it goes. So it becomes this really fun sort of puzzle solving in the sense of what are other people trying to do. Yeah, I would definitely recommend this one if you have a group that is familiar with a game like Pandemic. Uh, it's different, but sort of the same kind of idea of trying to control a board and keep all the pieces from going crazy. All the chaos from going too <laughs> overboard. Yeah. Um, next up, there's Unmatched. And this is a two-player or four-player game, if you play in teams, a head-to-head -head game that is sort of similar to what we talked about with the Funkoverse game in that it uses multiple different different properties. So uh, the base set includes some classic characters like King Arthur and Medusa, and there's also an expansion which has Robin Hood and Bigfoot, mm -hmm. and in the future we're going to get sets from Jurassic Park, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and even Bruce Lee is going to be a character in this game. Really excited to see how this goes. It's also one of the prettiest games, I think. Yeah. Really cool art design. Mm -hmm. If you've got, if you like the idea of really, you know, battling it out with someone and playing your cards strategically, uh, but with a fairly light rule set, this is one to look at, I think. One of the big things in board games, if you're new to board games, is legacy games. These are pretty much campaign games that add stickers and stuff that permanently affect the board for the rest of the life. It doesn't reset usually. Once it's there, it's done. Machi Koro, a very popular game, has now released their legacy version from Pandasaurus Games. If you don't know, Machi Koro is sort of a city building game. It's a dice, it's a dice engine game where you're gonna roll dice and depending on what card you have, you may trigger whether it's your turn or not your turn, which is really nice. And this is the legacy version, so you're gonna keep building up your town, maybe get, add new cards to the pile, uh, what starting cards with different goals. Very interesting. It's definitely probably a good start of a legacy game. Yeah, uh, you know, to get your feet wet in that genre, but it also kind of acts as a nice tutorial for Machi Koro. So if you've never played it before, it'll walk you through those steps. Mm -hmm. And when you're finished with the campaign, you can still keep playing it, which is nice. Uh, now, Dungeons and Dragons is obviously very popular right now. Uh, you've probably been hearing a lot about it lately. And it can be a very advanced game, but there are a couple of great ways this year to really just dip your toes into the water. The first is the D&D &D Essentials Kit. Uh, this is a small box set 
that just comes with just enough stuff, a real quick start guide to getting your, your first time into the D&D world, even includes a variant play for only two players. One person is the dungeon master, one is the player, uh, which is unusual for D&D. Usually you need more than that. So a nice way to get started if you have just a small group. And there's also the Rick and Morty Dungeons & Dragons box set, which uh, it would be a great companion to this, I think. It's another small adventure that just starts you off with a low-level character. But of course, if you like Rick and Morty or someone that you know does, which a lot of people do, uh, it's a really nice way to get involved and be able to wrap your head around the concepts of the game without having to learn a lot of uh, strange fantasy lore. It's yeah, all built in. Just in time for the new season to start. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that nice how that works out? <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, we hit the advanced section. These games are gonna run a little bit longer, but they're gonna be still really great games. And we gotta start off with one of the big winners of this year, Wingspan. This game is all about running a natural bird preserve, and we did a review and loved it. I mean, obviously everyone else loved it. It won this, the Spiel Award, which is one of the biggest awards out there. The art is beautiful, especially if you're like me who just loves really great pictures of animals. And their abilities are really cute. Like for example, one of the uh, creatures that lays its eggs in other nests, it sort of rewards you for when other people try to lay eggs, it gets eggs. So it sort of plays on things like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of really beautiful artwork in this one. Uh, I think that this one, you know, we have it in the advanced section, but it's, I would almost consider it on the heavier end of medium. I think you shouldn't be like too scared of introducing it to people who are newer to games. Well, actually one of the cool things is the new prints now will actually come with a sort of starter set in there of basic birds to give people to, to learn, which is really cool. Uh, another one from the same company, Stonemeyer Games, is Tapestry. And this is also one of the hottest game releases of the year. Very big box, much higher price tag than some of the other ones on this list. It's a civilization building game. Players have their own unique civilization and they are starting it from scratch. And as you go, you're gonna be progressing in areas of science, exploration, uh, warfare, technology. And everyone has their own unique set of cards and buildings. And as by the end of the game, you have a completely crazy different set of powers and positions that you're in. You might be exploring on the map, conquering different people. You might just be building up a bunch of cool medicines and other kinds of technologies that have their own special effects. Definitely one of the most involved games on this list. Uh, it is one for players who are really looking to spend their time and get involved in something in, in an advanced way. Yes, if you know anyone who likes Civilization, any of those games, this is definitely one to pick up. It's really all about that building up your civilization in essence, your world and what your story is. You're building your tapestry of your your people. Yeah, and again, really beautiful. Some cool looking miniatures and cards in there for that one too. Nice looking game. The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. This is a cooperative game, but it uses an app through a campaign. So what happens is you're gonna choose a character who has basic abilities and cards, and you'll play through different scenarios. As you beat these scenarios, you may maybe basically beat it, or you may do some more advanced stuff to give you titles or more experience, and you'll actually level up your little deck of cards, uh, and maybe even split into multiple different classes, and come up with some really clever ideas of how to interact and help each other out. It's not easy. There are some things that can be very difficult if you misstep or just get a bad roll or, or I guess card flip. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing about this one though is if you lose, you just keep going in the campaign and right. it's just part of your story. So you don't have to feel too bad. You don't have to like replay something. But yeah, if you have a fan of Lord of the Rings in your life, like I think they're going to love this game definitely. I mean, we definitely did. Yeah. Um, and maybe they're fans of a different old classic novel for geeks. It's called Dune. Uh, and of course the new Dune movie is coming out next year, but before that they've also brought back an old Dune board game. This is a reprint, a new edition of a classic in the board game world. It's a negotiation game. So players are going to be taking control of different factions and this one really relies on players knowing each other, knowing what their specific factions are looking for because they all act very differently, and when is the best time to ally with another player or to betray them, depending on what the situation is uh, one that uh, has 
been raved about for a long time. The original game goes back decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and But if you like that property, you have someone who might be interested in a really heavy, again, social negotiation style game, check out Dune. Now we have the new Star Wars game, Star Wars Outer Rim, which in this game, you, instead of playing as the Jedi, this is really more about playing as your scum and villainy in the Outer Rim and doing different missions. You will actually start off with a captain you'll choose as well as a basic ship, but you get to upgrade your ship, customize it specifically for whatever jobs you want to do. Maybe you're going to go more bounty hunter. Maybe you're going to more transport cargo. It's all up to you. There are a lot of great Star Wars games. Uh, <laughs> this one I think is that right heavy balance that isn't too light, but also also isn't like eight hours. Yeah, if you you know if you, if someone's excited for of course episode nine coming out or more thematically appropriate the Mandalorian which just premiered. If you know you're watching that and you're getting all hyped about bounty hunting and exploring mm -hmm. the universe, there's a lot of cool lore in here for Star Wars fans to explore. So that's our entire list. Those are all our games that we're recommending. Of course, there are a lot of other great games that came out this year, but this is a selection that we think will best suit most people broadly. Right. Of course, these are all base games as well. I mean, we've seen expansion for games we love. I mean, legendary for Marvel as well, like Arkham Horror card game, uh, the Power Rangers Transformer card game for me. There's Find out what the person you're looking for, what they're looking, what they want, because odds are there's a board game for it. <laughs> yes, ask them. I'll make sure if there's someone who already likes board games, because there's a chance they might have some of these. So you, mm -hmm. you never want to make that mistake. Uh, of course, <laughs> then if they do, another thing we didn't mention, but like dice, like meeples, uh, an organizer for the board game. Those are also other great gifts to look out for. Yeah, could be, could be. So let us know in the comments section below, do you have anything that you think would be a great gift? There's something you're hoping to get uh, this holiday season. Let us know some great Black Friday deal that you're looking for. Talk to us down there, and we thank you for joining us. And my name is Jonathan. I'm Will. And have a good one. This is Roll for Crit. Support our Patreon, like this video, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Watch more of our content now to hold back Cthulhu's madness.